Hi everybody, my name is Rashim Moghar as, and as Ram, uh, Ramya mentioned, I am going to talk about fast tracking your leadership career. And actually, um, this was ac actually supposed to be fast tracking my leadership career because these are the steps that I followed to fast track my leadership career. And then as I started mentoring other people, talking to people at various events, especially women, I realized that while everybody had this vague idea of how to go about, you know, entering, if you will, in the leadership uh, zone, um, there, uh, there was really a need to templatize it. And coming from a project management background, being a scrum master myself, I was like, oh my God, this totally needs to be put in a template that everybody else can use because sharing is caring, right? <laughs> <laughs> So uh, with that, um, for those of you who are um, on Twitter, want to connect with me later on, uh, my website and Twitter handle are over there. And then now we can get started. I also have a hashtag, fast track your career. If for those of you who are tech savvy and want to continue with this um, conversation later on. But then before we get started, I, you know, uh, Part of just putting this whole template together was uh, reading and researching and um, and trying to understand if there was a real need and if what I felt early on in my career in terms of not having that template, not having a true understanding of what it takes to fast track your career or be in that leadership zone um, was researching. So I researched a little bit and as I was researching, I found out that about 52% of the American women actually are in the high-tech industry. They're, they're professionals in high-tech industry, but only 20% actually make it to the leadership circle or to the executive levels. And we as women think that just merely by just doing our jobs well, by exceeding our performances, by getting those awesome performance reviews that we get, we'll be able to bake through and get promoted and um, find our place in the leadership circle. Not true. Didn't happen for me, right? Um, I, I, for the longest, uh, for about five years, six years in my career, I was like, I was a stellar performer, got, you know, awards every time, every year, look for, uh, you know, had, had a bunch of those awards in my cubicle or in my office. And then I realized, you know what? People who were guys who were getting threes and fours and I was getting a five, they were ahead of me. What were they doing that I was missing? Because clearly just by doing the job and doing it very well wasn't working for me. So clearly I identified like seven steps that really help you move forward. This is what has worked with me. This is what I share. I would like to share with you. And I'll bring in some real life examples as well. Uh, first is identifying your superpower. As Patty mentioned, resilience is one of them. But everybody has a different superpower. How do you go about identifying yours? Building your brand, very, very important. How many times we introduce ourselves and say, hey, I'm Rashim, senior director from Oracle. You know, and that becomes my identity. What is your personal brand? Who are you as a person? And what in you doesn't change even when you move from one organization to another? Or or from being a, being a p individual in an organization to being a CEO of your company. What carries on through? Then investing in yourself, very, very important. We think about investing in our job. We give 16 to 20 hours every day. For the longest time I did. Um, forgot to invest in myself. Um, finding a sponsor. I'm making a big claim over here. Ditch the mentor, find a sponsor. Very, very important. <laughs> You know, um, um, and we're going to talk a little bit about it. Practicing mindful leadership. Um, I've started practicing mindful leadership about uh, since last two years, and I've found that it has really worked for me. You know, I I work in a, I've always worked in high tech companies. I was with AWS before, now with Oracle, um, cloud computing. We see so many innovations happening every day. Everything is can be outsourced. Everything can be outsourced either to machines or to other human beings. What cannot be outsourced is mindfulness. That comes from within you. And that has to be a key component of your leadership. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. Then making sure you are heard. And this is very important because I've seen many women 
being getting a seat on the table and i'm sorry to say wasting that seat because they don't because they don't feel confident enough to be able to speak up or making themselves heard and then learning how to network again very important we as women um are very um, careful about the uh, relationships that we establish we have to be friends first before we can confide in someone before we can start talking about things understanding that networking is not socializing two different things and how to be smart about that so with that um we'll get started superpower pose <laughs> okay so it was about 12 years ago um one of the vps uh, that i used to work with came in one day and told me rashim you have the make it happen superpower and i'm like okay yeah what does that mean right and what do i do with it and so it took me some time to understand i didn't even know what the term meant and it took me some time to understand that a superpower is something that sets me apart from others it's basically my unique selling proposition it's what differentiates me from others right so how do i go about why should somebody hire me instead of 10 other people who are in the room right at with the same rank maybe with the same job title with almost the same kind of skill set what sets me apart right so how do you go about knowing what your superpower it is and remember as patty said everybody has a superpower so it's not you cannot come back and say it's like it's your dna you have it in you you have to just identify what it is some people know it instinctively some people take some time to understand what it is first and foremost ask others you know i made things happen i understood strategy and i understood the execution part of it but it came naturally to me so i never thought that it was something extraordinary i thought part of the job right i'm doing my job um so things that come naturally to us others might perceive it as a superpower so ask others ask your friend friends your family your coworkers so ask your managers you know you gave me this job and a project and you are appreciating me for a job well done what specifically do you appreciate me for in this right and when you drill down it will narrow down to your superpower some people have collaboration as their superpower some people have ability to set a strategy some people are good at execution some people are just good at getting the stakeholder buy in which might be a big piece of their work so understand what your superpower is if you are hesitant to ask others review the situations what i did was i put together last 5 7 projects or programs that i worked on or put together identified what the skill was in each of those that was required and what i was appreciated for and when you dive deeper and deeper into it and try to narrow down you'll come up with two or three qualities that people kind of appreciate you for that seemingly is your superpower and then also what makes you happy right project management makes me happy i always have a budget sheet and i always have a project plan for everything and i work with milestones and that's what i do i mean for god's sake i had a project plan for my wedding that was like for five people right <laughs> um so so i like doing that that makes me happy and that's my skill set and if you really look at it because my superpower is the make it happen superpower which is a blend of strategy and execution it really has a big role to play and then once you identify your superpower is then you build on it right you have to hone the skills so i was good at project management i got my pmp then i realized well waterfall method is not the only method and there are all methods out there and scrum is coming up in a big way so i went ahead and learned about scrum right so that's another piece to it that once you identify it you build your superpower and then the next step is building your brand and that's very important who are you as an individual what do you stand for what are your beliefs and what are your values and how do you bring your beliefs and your values in the work that you do how do you bring yourself to work your whole self right and that your bringing your whole self to work is not going to change with the jobs that you have your values are not going to change what you stand for is not going to change so first and foremost as an actionable update your linkedin profile how many of you have your linkedin profile which is almost a replica of your resume 
I I get tempted too, you know, to to do that. But that's not true. LinkedIn profile, your summary section should be all about where you want to be versus where you are today. What are your values? What are your business ethics that you bring to the table? Right? Write blogs. Many people are hesitant about writing blogs on LinkedIn or anywhere else, and they think that they are not masters in a subject area, so should, they shouldn't be writing blogs. Blo blogs are about sharing your opinion, your views, and building a community of like-minded people. And as long as you qualify them as your opinion and invite others to comment on it or share their opinions, it's perfectly okay. But what you're doing is you're building your brand in the process. You're letting people know what you stand for. You, you let people know what you believe in, your opinion about a subject area. For those of you who are developers out there, contribute to open source projects like GitHub, right? And then sign up for volunteering opportunities. I learned a lot signing up for opportunities uh, for PMP.org or if you are um, you are, um, you know, in women in technology kind of a person, then girls who code is, um, is a really good way to volunteer. But when you do that, what you are doing is, uh, you know, obviously there's this benefit and, and, um, the, um, and the goal of giving back to the community, but also you meet people, you build your network, you also um, let people know what you stand for, and it sets you apart as an individual. Investing in yourself, extremely, extremely important. Learn new skills. And if you think that the skills that you are learning are should map to the job that you're doing, not true. It should map to your superpower. It should map to your business values that you believe in. Because remember, if you keep honing your skills for the job that you are in, you'll be outdated pretty soon. You have to prepare for the next level and you have to build the skills for the next level. And then build your leadership presence. Leadership presence is all about exuding confidence, having a presence in the room. And it's not about, you know, oh, boy, I walk in and everybody stands up and I'm a diva. It's, it's about what I bring to the table and people should respect me for the opinions that I have, for my personal brand, for my superpower, for the skill set that I have developed. And, and remember, trust will come into play. And if you really look at trust, trust comprises of three things. It is skill set that you have and people should appreciate you for what you bring to the table. The second piece is positive intent. People should see you bringing yourself in with a positive intent. And third is time. It takes time to build trust. So with those two things, first two things of around skills and positive intent, you can knock it down and then give people time to build that trust relationship. Finding a sponsor. A sponsor is your cheerleader. A sponsor is a person who is going to stand up for you in a room where, you're, where you are not there. A sponsor is someone who is going to recommend you for the next level of the job. A mentor is a person who, whom you'll go to for emotional guidance when you're stuck in situations, how to navigate to. A mentor is not going to get you a job. A sponsor is. A sponsor has, um, with a sponsor you have a give and take relationship. I give you some, I take some from you. A sponsor is someone who will put his or her credibility at stake for you. So you have to be, find sponsors and the right kind of sponsors. I normally advise look for sponsors at least two levels above you, not your immediate manager, not your surrounding managers, someone who is two levels above you. Look for people who have, um, who have a good network. Also, don't constrain yourselves to your, uh, your business unit or your organization when you look for sponsors. But it's really, really important. And then once you identify who these people are, then try to build that relationship with them to make sure that eventually when you need them, you have that kind of relationship with those sponsors to be able to go and ask them to recommend you for a particular job. mindful leadership again very very important and here comes the positive intent which is which was our second step in building a trust relationship practice empathy be compassionate empathy is very critical when you start thinking about customers your stakeholders your teams and if you don't have empathy you cannot be a true cheerleader for your stakeholders or your teams or your customers 
having a clear vision, being able to articulate, go beyond goals and be able to set a vision, which is a primary point to leadership. Practicing a purposeful pause, as Patty mentioned, react, uh, respond and not react. And how do you do that? By being able to practice a pause. How many times we get an email and we are right away we want to send it a nasty email in the response. <laughs> I do that too, but I have a folder called dump folder in my email. And the moment I write that response, I pull it and put it in the dump folder and do not send it. Because I have to take out that emotional outburst that I have, but I am smart enough to know not to press on the send button. Uh, maintaining balance, having congruence between your values, your inner values and your outer world, right? And then always being curious, asking people the question, why, right? <clears throat> Making sure you're heard, very, very important. Know that when you get a seat on the table, and if you have a seat on a table ever, even when you are sitting in for someone, you have it for a reason. Do not waste that seat. Lo you have one opportunity. You either use it or you lose it. Exude confidence when you are sitting in that room. And then be prepared for conversations. Many I've talked to many women who got their first break by just representing people in meetings and then showing their value in those conversations. Do not sit in for the sake of sitting in. Sit in for standing up. And then learning how to network. Important thing, learning is not socializing. You're not going to meet your friends over there. Be strategic about uh, networking. Try to figure out who are the people, five people whom I want to network with today. And how are they going to help with the career, with my career or the areas where I have. But do not start the conversation with work. And this is the mistake that I made. I thought, oh my God, these are the five people. I have got five minutes. This, they better know what I'm all about and what work I can do and how smart I am at the work that I do. But no, that was not the right way. I probably scared most of them uh, and they didn't want to talk to me. But um, it's about finding common interest areas. So spend time in knowing the people whom you're going to network with and then, spend, then go ahead and network. So in terms of the next steps, if you haven't already done that, review your LinkedIn profile today and identify, start working on identifying your superpower. Extremely, extremely important if you don't know. Start asking right kind of questions. Also look, look at uh, people around you in your organization, in your LinkedIn profile, whom you would want to be your sponsors. Identify three to five of them and then understand how you can network with them. So when you write posts, Okay to tag them sometimes, right? Invite them or, or make yourself known, right? Most people are very receptive to tagging or inviting for comments or, or even a quick phone call. But if you don't ask, you won't get. And what is the maximum that can happen? The person will say no. Well, it was no to begin with. So there's nothing to lose in the whole scenario. And then today, identify 10 to 15 people you really want to network with. And networking is not just also about, you know, will this person help me grow in the corporate ladder? It's also about, is this, does this person have the life experiences that will help me grow as an individual, as a professional? Because ultimately, I mean, the friends that I networked with about seven years ago, they're still my support system. And I go back and we bounce off ideas. Two of them are now CEOs of their own companies. And it's always so nice to connect with them and, um, and just life lessons, experiences, um, uh, how we help each other, right? It's, it's almost like a sisterhood, if you will. And with that, um, I, I would highly, highly encourage you if, you, um, if you really want to make the most out of these sessions, don't go out of this session and forget about this session. Spend some time take the next steps, identify what you want to do, um, small steps, create milestones for yourselves. Milestones always work for me. Project plans work for me. Um, do whatever works for you, but don't, um, don't walk out of this session because then, um, then it's your 20 minutes wasted because you have really not taken away anything. And then if you want to read more about superpower um, and how to identify it, I have it on my website. I do have some content around mindful leadership as well. And I frequently post um, 
information around uh, some of the events that I am at and speaking at. So if you want to keep in touch, that's the best way to do that. Thank you.